it's funny because I, I feel like I'm also searching for the Easter eggs of when she drops them. How do you know when it's over, man? How do you know when it's done? How do you know when you're sitting there listening to a song you've probably heard in various incarnations a hundred times that we have to walk away from this one? This is this is as close to the feeling as we're going to get. Is that tough for you? When my my weird nervous circle the vortex drive starts to abate and I I start to just listen to it like a fan of music. Um, but yeah, there's a feeling that sets in. <laughs> well, it's beautiful to have Big Red Machine back. I'm a huge fan of your self-titled album. I have it on every format known to man. By the way, wonderful vinyl pressing it out, I have to say. Um, and it's it's great hearing the two of you, can, you know, you know, collaborating again, you and Justin, and, and bringing in, you know, um, some some new collaborators as well and and someone who obviously has become an essential part of your life story really as a creative tailor um, on this song. And uh, I suppose the obvious question, Aaron, is um, when did it become apparent there would be a trade of some sorts? Whatever wildfire happened last year creatively for Taylor and I, I think it just, we didn't want to stop writing songs together um, and still don't really. And then I, and I, you know, she's just, it's kind of like, somehow I ended up on the team with the best player, you know, so you just want to keep passing the ball to her. And, um, big red machine was a great, <clears throat> um, I don't know, opportunity. Cause she, she really fell in love with a lot of the music that Justin and I were working on. Cause I said, I would share it with her. Um, there's a lot of this music. I, I, right before Taylor approached me last year, Justin and I had been in Texas to work on these songs. And so they were pretty far along, but I shared, and I shared a bunch of them with Taylor and, and she really was inspired by them and, and she knew the first record. So it just kind of was in the air when we were working on folklore and evermore and some of the songs, you know, some of the instrumental ideas, there were some where she felt like, well, this might be big red machine. And so it just kind of happened naturally after we finished evermore um, she wrote Renegade and it was, you know, just like, again, getting hit by a bolt of lightning or something. When, when you get the chance to work with someone like her, she's just, she's a savant and sort of like, she's a savant and just this incredibly hardworking and, and wonderful person. So it was, it was, uh, just special. It's so true. You know, a lot of us have to work extra hard because we're not blessed with the, um, God-given talent. And Taylor was that unique combination of someone who is and and works as hard as somebody who isn't. <laughs> it's interesting for me to think about Big Red Machine being already sort of on the road to making whatever this become has become. Um, and you and Justin, who one of the things I love about the way that you both work is that you worship at whatever altar is 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 most exciting and most meaningful to you. It doesn't. It's not like you work in a structure per se. Um, but still, it, it, you know, you had to make a conscious decision, I guess, to some degree to put this project, whatever momentum was behind it, just on pause for a second to be able to really hyper-focus on what, what became your year with Taylor. Um, and I just want to sort of like, you know, was that a conscious decision or did you just find yourself working on something else? It was so unconscious. And I think that's one of the great things about Big Red Machine is it's not pressurized at all. It's just, I think for a long time, I didn't know if I would actually finish an album. Um, it's really been a vehicle. The, the The band, it's not really a band, but the project has has been a, a an excuse to work with Justin and sort of like engage. Like it's our friendship has been has developed a little bit around it as a you know it's just a, an excuse to hang out and also a, a way to collaborate with a lot of other friends and for me personally, a way to push music forward that I. Yes, just to grow and to try different things and sort of experiment with sounds. And so I, it's not, it hasn't been very uh, directed towards finishing something and promoting it. It's kind of, in some sense, it's like outside of those lanes, you know? Um, so it was, it was natural. Like Jess and I, we, we pushed it pretty far ahead last March in Texas and we were close to having something that, that was nearly an album and then the pandemic happened and and all the all my work with Taylor happened, but it didn't feel it felt connected and honestly I learned so much from the process of making those albums that I think when I came back to Big Red Machine I had this newfound drive and maybe intuition or something. I won't directly quote you because that's a sucker's game, but I but you said something along the lines of sort of you did re refer to the idea of 
faith in 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 making music and the idea i guess of everybody goes through that in life by the way you know and, and no matter what you do we all lose touch with the thing that inspired us or or keeps us going and we have to find new ways to to reconnect with it um was that really where you were at at some point in soon you know in, in, in recent times yeah i think so you get overextended or you get over um you know you get over yourself somehow or, or and i think because you know obviously with the national we've been at it for so long and um but there's moments where you hit a wall where you you, you kind of like feel like you've done all the things that you were meant to do or the ideas they run thin um and so if you find a way to have a creative streak like if you if you strike a vein somehow i mean that's the wrong metaphor but of, of creativity um i think it's it's a gift and uh, you never know when it's going to come and you never know when it's going to end. And I think that's what this album is partially about. It's like, how long is it, how long is it going to last? Um, Cause that could be, that could mean a lot of things, but one of them certainly, and this is something I thought about in the last year and um, you know, whether it's with Taylor or anyone else, like how long does this creative streak last? It's such a present observation. That's such a, that's such a present observation. It's like, they tell you to stay in the present as much as possible in life and not get swept up by the anxiety of the past or the future. And yet it really does, being in the present moment really does kind of affect your mentality of, of I'm, having, I'm, I'm so enjoying what is going on right now. It, how do I possibly hold on to it without, I guess, to some, to some degree ruining it by worrying it's not going to be here tomorrow? There's these moments in life, and in particular in creative situations where you just you want time to stop so you can savor the moment and have it last but you know that oh don't do that don't do that yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be gone um and that's something that you know i think of, about a lot and also just i think a lot of this record is about looking back and a certain kind of nostalgia where you're maybe you're looking for answers by you know shining a light on things that have happened the song renegade with taylor um you know taylor in such a sweet spot and, and a spot that you've obviously created for you for with each other for each other um this this just very clear line of inspiration between what it is that you're writing versus what she wants to write over it and and it it, I, it, it seems to me whenever we speak that it still just catches you off guard completely that somehow the two of you found each other and this unspoken chemistry just exists. Every time we we write a song together, we both sort of are a little bit dumbfounded by it or sort of kind of like, like how how is this possible? Because it feels uh, like the shoe fits so well somehow. And I think um, something about the way that I think or, or the way that I relate to music emotionally and then her her incredible acumen or her way of tracing music and her storytelling and her sense of melody that there's something that really clicks yeah and her storytelling in this song you know renegade it's <clears throat> it's um it's it's a, as good as anything we've made together i think and, and it's also something that i but yeah I emotionally was really struck by the first time i heard it just the way she talks about how anxiety and fear get in the way of loving someone or, 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 you know, create an inability for someone to love. And I think, you know, it's incredibly relatable, but it's expressed in the context of this fairly experimental sound world. Although um, I think we leaned into the, you know, the, the, the way it came together as a song, it just really, it, it really, I think sums up the whole Big Red Machine record. Here's something else that's new for Big Red Machine fans, which you'll notice after the last 18 months of fun and games, incredible songwriting, success, and also a healthy amount of Taylor Swift-inspired shenanigans. She sure loves an Easter egg. And here we are with Taylor Swift's handwriting all over some kind of countdown scenario that gets everyone super excited. I mean, that's just something that I'm, I'm playfully introducing to the conversation because it must be this is something that you really enjoyed. It's, it's a game that you get to play to see how much people are paying attention and how engaged they are. And it's something that she's done better than almost anybody else on the planet in my lifetime as an artist. So how, how much fun has it been for you to dance in that room? It's funny because I, I feel like I'm also searching for the Easter eggs when she drops them because there's so many. Or, you know, there's, 
is I'm such a fan of what she does, but I think she, she, her mind, yeah, she has a sort of mystical, mythical yeah, elements in her songwriting just kind of are there as a constellation in her mind. She sees things, patterns that she then drops um, in different ways. And so sometimes I know, and sometimes I don't know, um, but it's fun. And I think her fan, her fans are just incredible. The, the details that they're interested in, I love it. It's super fun. Like, it's just, I feel like I got invited into this, like, the best club or something. So here's what we do know, August 27th, the album date. Um, we know it's got a title um, and we know that there's one song with Taylor on it. Is that where the collaboration ends? I mean, if you guys can't stop writing, there must be more opportunity for, for, for her to be a part of the Big Red Machine experience in a sort of official, unofficial capacity if there isn't even, a, if there is even an official capacity about Big Red Machine. And there's another song called Birch uh, that's really, really stunning that she sings and is a big part of um, with Justin. And that's more of a duet. That's more like, that's, that's more that trade that we love when those two get and they trade lines. Justin sort of leads the charge, but she's a huge part of it. And, um, kind of, it's a duet then. And, and, and I think there's no real, it's, there's no real lines being drawn as far as when I don't think we, I don't know. I kind of hope we never stop writing songs together because it's so fun and so illuminating all the time. Who else was able to, um, to come along for the ride on this big red machine album? Because as you said, it's a chance for you to collaborate and to create opportunity for you to to learn from other musicians you know it, it, there's so many people that i've worked with in the past and close friends there's sharon van etten and and ben howard and um anais mitchell who's one of my favorite folk singers sings a ton and um he, there's robin pecknold from fleet foxes joins us on one of the the, the big big songs and, and so many people naeem and and amazing instrumentalists and it's kind of like an it, it's a really open door type project where it, it it feels like there's 29 different musicians who play on it and it doesn't it, it, it kind of it is cohesive because all the music kind of comes from me but the goes to many different places and yeah, i'm just really excited about it i feel really really lucky not to put fine a point on it my memory my memory may be failing me here anyway but is this the first time that robin and justin have shared a a creative moment like that for a while i think it's the first time that they've ever sung together i mean they the, the song phoenix is actually about the this one conversation that they had in a freight elevator in in a venue called the phoenix in toronto um 10 years ago or, or many several years ago and i think um yeah so you know robin sings the verses in the pre-chorus and then justin and Aeneas sing the chorus and it's just it's special to have these two kind of voices from the heavens like together um two great voices from our generation together um like that and it's like something you would dream up but doesn't often happen so yeah you must have moments when you're hearing justin sing and it's just like you are removed from the situation a conscious situation of what you've created and you become in just an unconscious spectator again a fan again all the time yeah it literally happens almost every time where you're yeah he just has this we, we even i mean i think it even surprises him sometimes because his voice just it's you know your head hits the back of the wall and and um also just his intuition a lot of times the first thing that he sings is the thing you know or like the first idea is the best best idea but there's just a raw there's a raw force um that is in him and just like this this powerful voice. I love this world that you have and continue to build through the music that you love to make. And I love how it just keeps attracting people into it. And, you know, like I said, I, I listened to their self-titled album over and over again. The fact we're going to get another one is just joy to me. So thanks for your time, Aaron. But most importantly, thanks for the music.